So for this trip I wish to explore what Australia is now. Is it still the lucky country? Does it still maintain the idea of a fair go? The term lucky country came from a 1964 book written by Professor Donald Horn. In the original context, Horn asserted, Australia is a lucky country run mainly by second-rate people who share its luck. If one is to study the modern history of Australia, it seems the country rides on the wave of one natural resource boom after another. The concept of fair go harks back to the convict days. Convicts made up a large proportion of Australia's early colonial population, and by the 1820s, many freed convicts were granted land and held positions of trust and power. The English system of class eroded under the harsh Australian light. But for my story, I want to concentrate on five short years. Five short years that changed the landscape of my home district in ways I find hard to even fathom. Before I start my trip, I wish to climb Mount Burrumbeet. In 1836, explorer Major Thomas Mitchell was the first European to set eyes on what he said was, a country ready for the immediate reception of civilised man. Certainly a land more favourable for colonisation could not be found. Flocks might be turned out upon its hills, or the plough at once set to work in its plains. Of this Eden, it is certain to become a vast importance to a new people. By 1839, overlanders had reached the district with sheep and cattle. There were scuffles with the natives. Both sides suffered casualties. In 1841, the government's chief protector of Aborigines, G.A. Robinson, visited the district and camped on Burrumbeet Hill. He sent out messages that he wished to meet with the local Aborigine tribes. First he met with a tribal group of 13 who were, as he stated in his notebook, in a great state of wretchedness, dressed only in riverbed reeds to protect them from a bitter storm. He later met with 60 others. Chief Timberoon of the Toondin Jerick Bullocks stamped on Burrumbeet, shouting, Country belonging to me. Country belonging to me. Kangaroo gone. Jumbuck eat up all the roots. Five years. It took only five years. Where Mitchell had seen many native fires and flocks of emus, Robinson saw sheep and cattle and a few smouldering remnants of a transformed landscape. I think to understand a people one must understand the history of their country. Australia's recent history has very brutal beginnings, the usual story of colonisation, and on top of that, it was a dumping ground for prisoners. I want to keep in mind this past as I travel round. I had one more place I wished to visit before I left, the pub my father drinks at. It's one of those old fashioned pubs that I actually really enjoy visiting. No bloody pokies or blaring music, just an honest to goodness place to have a drink and a yarn. It's usually populated with old timers, and everyone is called by a nickname Basher, Turkey, Spocker, and Whirly. I've been staying with my dad while I prepared my bike. He was gracious enough to allow me to stay a little longer when I experienced a few hiccups getting the bike out back ready. Looking back on it, I appreciate this time as it changed me from being a man afraid to do his own mechanical work to a man who now enjoys knowing things are done right. I ride my bike, I work on my bike. If anything goes wrong, it's my fault. In this internet age, videos and forum posts help a newbie do anything from changing a tyre to upgrading one's suspension. It was an important stage in my pre-trip preparation to trust myself to pull things apart and put things back together. 